Hi, my name is Laurel, and this is my husband Bruce behind the camera. <laughs> he didn't want to do that, I had to force him to do that. But welcome to Impact Gardening. This is our very first video of our journey through life with plants, and I hope you will join us on part of that journey through life with plants. If you're watching this and you're excited, then you probably love plants too. Plants happen to be something that Bruce and me have in common. We love plants. This is going back to our childhood. We just love plants. We love all the benefits, the things that it does for us, right? It grounds us. It brings us joy, the beauty. You know, it has a calming, peaceful effect on us. If we're in a bad mood and we're looking at our landscaping or plants, we feel better. Of course, there's the health benefits of plants as well. The shade and shelter that it gives us, we just love plants, right? We couldn't do life without plants. And for me personally, I couldn't do life without not only exterior plants, but interior plants. So we're gonna be talking about both as we go through this journey. So plants, as you know, are living things. And living things need the ideal environment to survive and thrive. Sometimes things go wrong, like disease, or insects, pests, and sometimes it's just the weather, right? Too hot, too cold, too windy, too much rain. For us here in South Florida, that's where we are. Hurricanes, things affect plants. Most times they'll bounce back, but sometimes they die and we have to replace them, right? Other times we're replacing them because we've used them in a design and we just don't like the way they look. They don't give us the impact that we were going for. You know, when you've done something and everything is popping and you know, once everything get established, you just love the height, the, the, the texture, the color, the whole thing just comes together. Sometimes it doesn't quite come together and give you that impact. So you've got to tweak it and take things out. Listen, gardening is a process, right? And even if you don't need to tweak anything, sometimes your taste change. This year, you're kind of monotone and you want everything to look the same. Other years, you want a little bit more color and diversity. So that's part of the work with gardening, but it's also part of the joy because it just evolves. Gardening is evolving and changing and always giving you that excitement, making you want to go out there and do something or stay inside and do something if you're an interior gardener like I am also. So on this first video, we're gonna talk about our personal project, which is our home. We, and I'm gonna show you guys some videos of what the house looked like when we just moved in. It was dismal. I, I was getting depressed when I looked at our yard. Depressed, seriously depressed. So you're gonna see a video where we were, then I'm gonna show you another video of the process when we did the install, which was June 2020, we started the install. Exciting, it was up mid-June. You'll see the install and then we're gonna show you what the garden, our front yard looks like today. We only did the front yard, what it looks like today. Now this weekend, we had some projects that we had to do. You're always gonna have projects if you're gardening. The larger scale you're going, the more work and projects you have to do. Our project this weekend was we needed to weed, we needed to mulch, and then we had some ground cover that we wanted to put in and also some ground cover that we wanted to move around or tweak a little bit right so yesterday which was Saturday we did all the weeding we worked late into the night I didn't come in until 9 15 p.m. listen this is South Florida and if you're not doing it first thing in the morning you've got to wait until after four o'clock when the Sun is kind of not as it at its peak because it's not only hot in the 90s but it's humid it's really difficult to do that right so Bruce does that full-time every day so definitely when we're doing our personal projects we want to do it in the off hours when it's cooler right so we started a little bit later yesterday but we finished our weeding today we're gonna to do mulching and we put in uh, some uh, lime green sweet potato, sweet potato vine um, in one patch one area and we need to tweak a couple of other things right so I'm only dressed for this intro video I'm not dressed for gardening so I'm gonna pause the video here, change out into my gardening clothes, and then you can join me again 
when we start the mulching. See you soon. Big. Yeah, nice. After you put it, nice. Yes. So the semi has arrived with all of the palms. What a production. So here we go, phase two. Got all the holes in. There's a European fan. Bamboo's going over there. That is called a capoxia. It's from the island of Madagascar. That is a cabada. This is the dipsis. It's from Africa. Pembana from the Pembana Islands. That is a European fan palm. Here's Alexander's. That one there is a fancy lady that's crossed a cross between a foxtail and a Alexander. And then this one would be your single trunk fishtail palm. And this would be a black bamboo. So picking it up, I'm outside now, I'm all changed, ready to work. And so remember, we're mulching. So we have our mulch here, 40 bags. We're gonna be spreading the mulch throughout the, the front lot, the front landscaping, right? And so Bruce has the camera, I'm gonna take it from him. And then I'm just gonna give you a quick mini view because next week I'll do some more detail and talk about plants and what have you, because I know Many of you would love some suggestions for which plants you want to use, especially if you're in South Florida, right? So here comes the mini tour. Sorry for the bad camera angles and what have you, but okay. So that's our mulch. And then this is the first side piece. When I tell you this place is a transformation, I can't wait for you guys to see the video before, right? So we just recently put the saw down as well. This is Zoysa. It's a typically a golf course grass. We decided not to go with St. Augustine and it was a very good decision. This is um, just a little, it's about two months that the grass has been down, right? So um, we did the weeding. We still have stuff to tweak and we put some lime green sweet potato vine down last night that's going to fill in very very nicely around that palm this palm is one of the rarest palm most endangered in the world we're going to be talking about that next week and of course because we have the zoysia grass we went for a traditional rotary um uh, ro rotary mower right so that's the mower right there we're going to do some sort of a pond type thing flowing through the side 
but um and here is my cat ty anytime i'm outside he's always hanging around i think he loves this stuff but anyway um so where you see dirt right now that's where we're gonna mulch we haven't decided all of the ground covers yet we have this little section right here that we're looking for a specimen plant we haven't decided what yet this grass going around and as you see it there it's called mondo grass and not doing too good right here um, perhaps getting a little bit too much sun so we're, we're still thinking about it remember gardening is a process so some things work and then um, some things don't and you have to rethink it so this is a mound out towards the street right and so what would be the swale we decided to go with some black mulch so this is some ground cover we put in about a month and a half ago it's doing well it's called a dwarf waffle plant let me just take that weed out that shouldn't be there and so we decided on the black mulch because the black mulch just makes everything green pop right uh, this is some lantana that I have in the front here it's white I've never seen white lantana and I really wanted a pop of white I'm not getting the pop I want so I may have to rethink the lantana but what we have here is some black bamboo uh, very unusual and so as you can see the black mulch that we're laying along here uh, that we've, we've just started right and we're gonna continue throughout this entire bed that goes around this way this is some more of the dwarf waffle plant uh, lots of weeding that we did and this is pretty much where we stopped with the zoysia grass you can see the difference between the zoysia and the saint augustine the zoysia grass has really done very well it really took to to this area the, the thought was maybe we had too much shading but it's amazing it's doing well it's so beautiful and um, we've amended the soil a lot we happen to be close to the the beach so the soil around here is completely sandy so we've amended this soil over the year quite a bit um, just to help the plants to settle in but quite honestly palms tend to like a more sandy soil anyway so that's Bruce doing some of the work moving the mulch around and I'm getting ready to join him with that I'm not gonna let him just do all the work on his own but this is just like a, a quick view and I'm gonna back up. I'm backing up where we're going out. I'm going out to the street. It's just a quick view of our property and I'm trying not to move too fast. I'm not like an expert at this, so bear with me. A quick view, this is from the street. Uh, we have a carport, not a garage. So we kind of did this thing in the front. It's, it's like a, a black P-Rock and um, you know that helps us with some parking area along the front and yeah we've got some we didn't quite catch these weeds there is a there's a, a a cloth underneath that stops a lot of the weeds but right there in the crevice where the street meets the gravel you can see i've got some weeding to do before we go in tonight right but this is where we are and just beautiful we love that lush look we're still tweaking things you'll see things in pots what have you we're still tweaking things we've got work to do and of course we have a water feature that we haven't started on yet we've just started on it and another thing that we did was uh, Bruce installed an irrigation system so I try to I'd like to try to show you that as well and so we, we we've got things um, at a place where they're gonna get the adequate watering that they need. And I'm also on a, um, um, a watering system in our town that uses um, post-consumer water. And it's you know less expensive on the bill and you get to water as often as you need to for your plants. But this is what we have. And so I'll pick it up a little bit later when you see where we're, how we've come along with all of our mulching. Good morning happy monday morning yes it is monday morning it's no longer sunday but i'm gonna conclude the video that i started sunday uh just by letting you know what we were able to accomplish this weekend it's a beautiful day it's very sunny it's around eight o'clock monday morning so um, i'm hoping that 
you know, you're able to get a good glimpse. The sun is coming up. We have a east-west exposure. So uh, hopefully, you know, there's not too much glare and you can see what I'm talking about. But you know what they say, whoever they are. You know, if you have a project that's gonna take you um, five hours, double the time, it'll probably take you 10. So that's what happened to us this weekend. So here's what we were able to accomplish so far. That's my cat, Ty. Oh my goodness, he was nipping at my ankle so much when I was doing this video, I could hardly finish. I tried to ignore it. And so the more I tried to ignore him, the, the harder he nipped at me. My goodness, he's, I call him Ty because he's a little tired, but I love him. Anyway, so here's what we were able to accomplish. So we took out some of the ground cover so that we could put the black mulch in the front. We just thought it had a nicer look uh, than having the ground cover come all the way out to the grass. And then this is the lantana next to it, white lantana, which is really not coming out with the color. It has enough fertilizer there, but for some reason, um, it's just not showing in color. And I really wanted a pop of white. And then coming around this curve, you have more of the dwarf waffle plant and we took some out. We're gonna reuse it. We're not gonna throw it away. It's so hard for us to do that. So the dwarf waffle plant, we took that back some so that we could edge with the black mulch. And so this is one, the base of one of the palm trees that we have. Uh, this is a principe and this is uh, a croton, a very nice croton. This is a black bamboo. And then we're just moving through here with some more of the ground cover. And then I'm taking an angle down. So this is where we put in the um, black pea rock at the front of the house so that we can have a bit more parking area. So I'm just gonna sort of circle around so that you can see this section. So this is the front where um, we want to find a specimen plant that we can put right there. And that's Ty again, waiting for me to pay attention to him. He wants to play. He's, he's just wrapping around my ankle anyway. Um, so as you can see, we put the um, black mulch along by the Mondo grass. It just makes a really sharp um, line of demarcation and it pops. The grass pops, the mondo grass pops because of this dark mulch. And this is the dark mulch at the base of one of our palm trees. Uh, we bought this palm tree in a very bad situation and it wasn't looking good. Believe me, it's amazing uh, based on how it was before. And I don't know if you can tell, but um, that tree is full of bees and I think some wasps unfortunately. So then here we are coming down along with the line of demarcation again with the black mulch. That's pretty much close to our property line. So those are some of our palms coming down. That's called a fishtail palm, by the way. This huge palm is a single trunked fishtail palm. It's kind of lopsided. We had some bad weather last year and unfortunately two major limbs on the left side broke. And then we're coming down again. Um, this is another croton that we have, but you can see how the mulch really makes everything pop, right? All the weeding. It's a labor of love. It's just an absolute labor of love. Coming back around. And there's my cat trying to scratch in my grass. I'm gonna get him to stop that. We just put the grass down about two months ago. And so it has taken very well. It's called Zoysa. It's usually used for um, commercial jobs and for for uh, golf courses, so, but it's doing very well here. Uh, this tree here, we have two of them, it's called Jabuticaba uh, from South America. We've gotten maybe two fruit off of one. It's tipping brown at the edges, so we have to figure out what's going on there. And then 
here we come around uh, this was a transplant one that was actually headed for um, headed for the dump and we tried to save this, this is from one of uh, Bruce's jobs and they took this out it's a cocoa plum and it's just so it was such a beautiful plant tried to save it it doesn't look like it's gonna last it's pretty brown and as you can see there's another um, that's called a foxy lady uh, fern palm I'm sorry and then we have uh, some Alexanders in the back, another foxy lady, a vecchia, it's called a vecchia palm. And I may have to uh, fix some of these names because I'm trying to make sure I get all the names. But by next week, next week, I'm going to be a little bit more detailed about every single um, palm and plant that we have here. So that if you want to use some of the material that we have used, you'll know what to look for right and then this is another um, four it's got four stalks and it's another very skinny Alexander and it gets whipped around um, by the wind a lot and then we're just coming down and you can see where we ran out of mulch we just ran out of mulch right here and I don't know if you can see the difference between uh, the darker mulch and the lighter mulch you probably can't because of the lighting i can even see a shadow of myself but um this is what we were able to accomplish so far i'm gonna, gonna try to um just walk backwards look at him he's <laughs> he's having a good time this morning he loves being around me he's you know he must have done something right here that little bugger he must have done something right there i'm gonna have to take care of that Well, if you have pets, you understand, right? You love them, but sometimes they drive you crazy. So just stepping back so you can see the property and trying to get the best angle that I can um, while not getting too much sun. But that's where we are. So next week, look for another video where I will talk about the plants. I may cover some of the issues that we've had with them. Um, you know disease or things just not doing great and and how we are addressing those problems but definitely it's a great time to come back and see what we've done because we're gonna go over um, some of these palms I really would love for you guys to know about some of these they're all specimens uh, not palms that you would normally see in yards this one here which is one of the most endangered uh, palms in the world it's called a carpoxylon so we'll talk about that as well Co of course we have a coconut palm right here uh, in the front and that's probably the only the only palm we have out here that is easily recognizable but you know that's what we do for a living that's what bruce does for a living he's a landscape designer and a gardener so of course um you know you're gonna see some different and unusual things so until next time thank you so much for joining please comments i would love to hear from you questions comments suggestions um for things that i can do better i'm i'm always open to your suggestions so I look forward to seeing you next week. I'll make this video and I will try to give as much information as I can to help you on your journey with plants. Take care for now.